everyone, Sophia here from agreatchallenge.blogspot.com. I am back in my basement. Today I'm doing another mini project. I bought more bookshelves. There's a possibility today that I may finally have all my books organized the way I've wanted them. I'm not sure. We're going to see. Just to give you an update, the last time I saw you, I did this corner right here, built this bookcase, put the uh, quilt um, on the display over there, put the frame and kind of move things around. I got rid of the uh, big ottoman that was there. I still have this temporary um, coffee table, which is probably going to go. I still have to do the slipcover for this sofa, but I just want to show you a new arrival. We found this. This is a leather big armchair with its ottoman. Now I'm going to pull out a little bit. It's taking a lot of space but to be honest it feels awesome. It is super comfortable. We really really like it so it's going to stay here. These are the books in the temporary display for now and if you remember from the last video the link is down below. Um, this is just the way I've been putting them so far because I have to build bookcases. So rest of the basement you've seen it's a little bit of a mess so we're going to do some cleaning today but this is what I got I got one more of the tall bookcases right here that's the one that's over there and that new bookcase is going to come here so I'm going to undo all of this and that new bookcase is going to go all the way up if I can fit it I just realized that I have this little dent right here so I don't know if it's going to work we'll see I have to measure and then I have another one that's a short one so if I can't put the tall one here the short one will go here. If I can put the tall one here, it will go there, and then the short one will go over there in between the two doors. All right, I'm probably going to have to put another one over here. I'm not sure if I can fit all my books, that's fine. I don't have to do it. If I cannot fit all my books, and I'll have to run to Target and get another tall one for over here. I suspect that eventually I'm going to need more bookshelves for this basement because it's not like we're going to stop purchasing books. We just love them. And then I have a lot of books from upstairs that need to be brought downstairs. All right. Um, so I'm trying to think, where am I going to start? Let me see if I can put the tall one over here. I'm going to measure. It says it's um, 71 and 1 16 high. So I'm going to go get my uh, tape measure. No matter what, I have to build it. So it says they're going to be on that side over here. And then once it's built, I'll take down all of this stuff here and then put it back in. is built um, but to be honest this is nowhere near the quality of the one that's behind me it's the same brand it's the same height but here's the problem and this is a target rent one it's not as wide I don't know why that's the one they sell as being the tall bookcase they've totally changed it Two, it's not even the same way of building it this one they've added a piece right here at the bottom which the other one doesn't have and the way they've built it, I can tell you right now, this thing is not going to last. It's already falling apart on the left. Uh, I am not happy with this bookcase at all. This is totally not the one that I purchased over there. I don't know what's going on with these guys because this is exactly the same brand. They sell it as the uh, five shelf bookcase in 71 inch and, um, you know, uh, 1 16th which fits in here by the way so I know I'm going to put it there but it totally changed the way it's being constructed and I was already not happy with the way the other one was constructed because it was nowhere near the quality of Ikea but this is garbage this is really garbage so I don't know what's going on with the brand the room essential brand that you find at Target but very obviously they've changed um, the supplier I guess so they've changed the manufacturer I don't know 
but this is not good um, so I'm not happy I'm still gonna put it up because I need to have it up but I'm not happy with it mm -mm, not at all somebody asked a few weeks ago if I ever bang my nails <laughs> with the hammer there you go proof <laughs> I just did it which chipped the entire uh, nail polish I don't know if my nail has been damaged not that there's much of a nail anyway um, I, what did I just do I used this part this ledge right here as a support because I am banging white um, you can't see it at all I'm banging white nails on the sides right here to reinforce it a little bit because I really have a feeling that this is not going to last. So the only thing I can tell you right now is that if you're going to buy uh, the Room Essentials from um, Target, don't get the one that says 71 by 24 by 9.5. I don't have the box for the other one, but I know that the other one is wider. So where's my measuring tape? Right here. Uh, what did this say is the width on this? So this one is saying that the width is 24 and a half. Let's see what the width is on the other one. That's a shame. I don't know why they're doing that. It's so stupid. All right, let's see. Yeah, this one is 26 and a half. So you see, they uh, basically cut out two inches one inch on each side um, in order to probably save on manufacturing and this is unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. It's not the same shelf. Again, it's not constructed the same way. I'm just, I'm very disappointed. So we'll see what happens with this one. Maybe I'll be lucky and though it has this thing here at the bottom, which the other one didn't have. So I have a feeling it's going to be the same crappy material. Um, it is what it is. You can't, you just can't buy quality stuff anymore. It's crazy. Ah, well, it's not like I cannot build my own bookcases. <laughs> I just don't want to have to do it here. Because again, we didn't do the floor. So it's, um, it would be a total waste of time for me to do the built-in bookcases on this floor. I'll need to have to tear them down when we do the, uh, um, when we actually finish the floor in this basement. So I'm just going to use this temporarily. But I'm not happy, Target. Not at all. At this point, I'm going to recommend Ikea. For sure. All right. Let me remove all of this stuff. Um, because this bookcase even though it's Ikea it's about eight years old and I've moved it so many times with stuff in it because you know I don't want to be bothered uh, so I busted it I got to take that all down and then put it back in the white one okay so here it is uh, I kind of flushed it in a way where I don't have it's not perfectly in the middle because I want to be able to put my trash can here um, but again this is um, let me see, there's one, two, and three movable, and over there there was one, two, and three movables. That's the same thing, but it just doesn't feel the same. And all I can say is, and I had to put a shim uh, at the bottom as well so I could keep it level. So I have a shim over there and then in the back, because that's my problem. The floor is not straight. But to be honest, this is like Walmart quality. So if I'm going to buy a Target... I would expect to have Target quality, not Walmart, so very, very disappointed. Um, all right, let me fill it up. Um, I got to figure out what I'm going to put in there. I think I want to use the top part to put some of my decorative items. And I'm going to start putting the books down at the bottom. Obviously, the tallest one and heavy ones are going to go at the bottom because I don't want this to be top heavy. It's already not that sturdy. So I'm not crazy about what I've done so far. But pretty much, I'd say 95% of the books that were in there were able to fit in here, plus some. So I have a few James Bond here. I need to figure out what to do with them because I have the entire collection upstairs. So I think I'm just going to consolidate them at some point, perhaps in the bookcase that's going to go over there. This is a hints and tip book uh, from the uh, DK collection. A thousand, no, ten thousand and one hints and tip for the home. If you ever get a chance to find this book, and I'm sure they still sell it, they may have an updated version. This is absolutely unbelievable. There is everything that I know that I've been showing you so far, I've gotten it from this book. So this is like a Bible to me. You may want to check it out I don't know, on Amazon. I'll put the link below because um, I'm sure you can still find it. All right, so on the top shelf, I'm sorry for the uh, reflection. 
uh, and the glare. And these are two dolls that are my childhood dolls. I have um, the Mary Antoinette here that's really, really, really old. So I have it on the stand. Um, and I've shown it in another video. So that one, I could wash it, but I really don't want to touch it. I just don't want to. So that was like my little doll when I was a kid. And then this one, that's my little Mitsuko from Japan. I've had it since I was six years old. The poor thing, the wig fell off. But, you know, it's... I don't recall if it was supposed to have uh, boots or anything. But those two are under the bells because I really, really don't want to get them damaged. So they're here. Over here I have a collection of novel related to the Cold War and World War II and um, yeah, pretty much World War II and the Cold War. A few books on the history of France, either in French or um, in English. This is just a, a box that I have for ages. I'm just putting it for decor. This is a first edition, first print of Truman Capote's uh, In Cold Blood. So that's a collectible. I'm keeping it here. I should find a stand for it because the way I have it right now, it's kind of um, tilted. So I don't want to damage the spine already. I'm missing the dust cover. But that stays here. These are family heirloom things, you know, door handles. Here I have everything that's related to political figures. So I have biographies of presidents, Churchill. We have uh, Napoleon in Russia, which is one of my uh, favorite books. So at least you know, one that I enjoy reading once in a while. And at the bottom is a mishmash of a bunch of stuff. I have some Dickens start together here at the bottom. Um, it's just all over the place. I have all of the Bridget Jones here, all of the Douglas Adams here. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not really assorted. As I'm putting together the two that go over there, I'm probably going to move some of the stuff out of here and bring some stuff here. I just find that that bookshelf is not giving me enough um, options because it's narrow, so it fills up real, real fast. But then, because there's only five shelves, the two at the bottom are just way too tall. So I have to put books this way. I just don't like to see that empty space. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is probably try to cut my own or see if I can buy some. Um, I doubt it. But for now, this is what it looks like. Let me pull a little bit. Um, of course, it's a mess because, you know, I'm still putting stuff together. But at least when you come in, it's a little bit more organized. It blends in a little bit better than the black bookcase. But again, I'm not very happy with this one. So eventually, one of those days, and I may not even do that ever, I may just go to Ikea and get a uh, Ikea one that's sturdier. Um, don't mind the dogs. Stay outside. Um, yeah. All right. So let me build this one. Put it over there and um, hopefully it won't take too long and start filling that up. Small project. And here we go. That's the little one. I would have liked it if it was 26, but it's 24 inches. <laughs> I don't know why they did this. You can probably hear it from my voice. I'm not happy about this at all. Um, I'm wondering if I could put two side by side. Hold on. Let me measure this. Let's see if I got 48. Damn it. Now I have 42. So I can't even put two side by side. So that's just too bad. Um, Alright, now I have to deal with it, I guess. So what I'm going to do now is pretty much um, start emptying this and put it in there. At least I'm going to have one level down. I have an idea of what I'm going to put here. I'm not telling you about it yet. Um, I think it's going to work, I'm hoping. And then I have to put the rest of those prints over there. Well, it looks like I was able to remove two levels worth of books because if you remember, this was all the way up to the top. So this is what I got left. Um, and as always, I'm putting them in order, or at least in some kind of uh, arrangement that makes sense. So on top I have the Tintin collection that we have. These are the ones that are in English. I have an old antique book about the FBI and right on top of it is a handbook of practical spying because you never know when you're going to need that. I bought this at the uh, Spy Museum in um, Washington DC and it's, it's actually quite fun to look at. It's one of those things you can just pick when you're on the uh, chair on the sofa and just, you know, browse through. Um, these are all philosophers, so we have Plato and Kant and uh, Virgil and, you know, all of these guys. Uh, these are visual references 
look of the century, meet Mr. Product, a thousand extraordinary objects. It's a really, really cool book. I love this. Visual Dictionary, that's the Macmillan one. This is really, really nice. Might be a little outdated now. These are all NLP, also known as No Linguistic Programming, Positioning and Reframing. So it's kind of like a um, kind of outside the box type psychology. Um, it's pretty interesting um, to read. It's about influencing people's um, hypnosis, things like this. So that's that. Over here is all the books I have about raising children. So it's either it's all about raising boys, obviously. Um, some of them are in French, some of them are in English, and then I have a collection of uh, prevention magazine books that really should be... Is that a dust bunny over there? Yeah, spotted right there. I need to sweep. Um, these should be somewhere else, actually, because let's face it, I'm going to forget about them if I leave them there. And then there's like some kind of novels that I needed to put somewhere uh, temporarily. And that is it for that corner. So let me move out so you can see what it looks like. It's not the greatest look, but again, and the sofa is kind of like the eyesore in this room. I'm going to put the uh, rest of the art that I have here, and then I'm going to see if I can go in the garage and find what I want to put over there. Um, it's going to take for me to go up on the ladder and uh, reach the upper part of the uh, garage, so... I don't know, maybe I'll get Scott to do that for me. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. So let me put those frames up, show you what it looks like, and I'll go in the garage and come back in a minute. Okay, so here we go. I have my other two prints. that are same thing than the other ones. These are uh, 1950s. I think, I'm not sure, I think it was Women's, I think it was Women's Day or Women's World magazine. Maybe good housekeeping, I'm not sure. But these are 1950s car commercials or advertisement, so it matches the one that's over there. And you see I had them, I did it myself, so it's not like very, very well done. Um, but they are matted with some type of scrapbooking paper. And as I was doing this, I was thinking about, well, the eyesore in this room really is the, um, the sofa. I don't have the time right now, nor the desire to be honest to do a slip cover for it. Now the problem with this sofa, while it is super comfortable, it is a tea cushion. It is super difficult to find a tea cushion slip cover that is not a sure fit stretch. I can't find them. When I'm looking for something that has the base of the sofa and then every individual cushion would have their own um, cover, I guess. That way I can remove them and wash them. And I looked and looked, um, there's some that you can find at Ikea that are like this, but they're not tea cushion. The ones that you can find at Pottery Barn are tea cushions. They are uber expensive. I might as well just buy another sofa. And they're not the same size. So even if I really, really wanted to keep this sofa and I was going to go for the um, Pottery Barn ones, they don't fit the sofa. They are either a little bit too short or they're too long. So it just doesn't fit. I mean, this sofa was custom made. Um, if you recall from my last video, that was my mother-in-law sofa and, and we had the longer version. This was just the uh, two-seater, I guess. The other one was the one that had three cushions. That one was so busted, we had to get rid of it. But this is what I did. I uh, went upstairs in my linen closet and I found an old quilt or quilted mat lassie, whatever you call it, um, gray queen size coverlet. And I've had it for years. I do not use it on my bed upstairs at all. I don't think I've used it in maybe, I'd say eight years. That's how long it's, uh, it's been folded and it still smells wonderful. So I just put it up, um, I tucked it in the back here rather than having it kind of hang so that way when you sit it kind of holds it these here i have it tucked all the way in and then over here i tucked it underneath here too and the two things that you see here are basically the pillowcases that i have tucked underneath the cushions and letting them dangle or fold down um to make it like a uh, kind of a skirt um of course it doesn't cover the sides on either side because the sofa is bigger. I tried it the other way, flipping it around. I have more to play with, 
but then I don't have enough to cover the um, armrest. So from far away, when you walk in, it's kind of looking a little bit better. It does need something red. Definitely needs a little bit of red here. So I got to see what I got around. For that purpose, um, the table here has got to go. I may get rid of it today, actually, because, I don't know, it just takes too much room, constantly banging into it. But the temporary solution to having to either purchase another one of the short fits that are garbage to begin with and I don't like for me right now until I can do my own slip cover it's going to be to use this and it's easy to wash it fits in my machine I don't have to dry clean it or whatever and it's pretty easy to put back together so that's what it looks like I still have to do this it's going to be another video um yeah I mean I guess that's all right it's not great looking but it's better than what I had before so gonna get rid of this since I'm going to the garage I'm gonna bring that up there um, don't need it I guess that little box right here with the remote and the tissue can go on the floor and that gives me a whole bunch of space here to play with if I want to bring another table I can it's gonna have to obviously be very small um, I probably would do something round I think and yeah, that's about that. So let me get the stuff I'm going to put on that wall and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just came back from the garage where I literally had to climb all the way on top of the rafters to get some stuff. And it was a good thing because I found out that I had mice in there. So I'm going to show you what I brought back. The first thing is this right here. This is an old, I'm talking, antique um, flyer or sled, I guess. And... It belonged to grandma and she had the bridge that's right next to a house which is being sold right now um, in Ohio so that's the bridge that was right there so this is like a family heirloom definitely want to keep it I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it in a corner here my concern is that the kids you know how they are they're gonna to want to play with it I'd rather have it suspended or you know put in a way where they're not gonna to touch it because the paint is already kind of peeling here and there. Ideally, I should put a uh, coat of schlack on it to protect it, but that's that. So I brought that back. And then when we had our windows replaced, I kept all of the top panels, the ones that have the uh, the crisscross. I don't know what you call them. They have a specific name, but anyway. So this, I definitely need to clean because you can see there's like um, little seeds and stuff um, and figure out which side I'm going to keep this one looks really really bad you see how we needed to change our windows I think I might keep the yellow part um, and what I want to do with it after I clean it I want to have it right here and another time another project I'm going to frame pictures family pictures and some heirloom stuff and I'm gonna put it in the back of it so that's gonna act like a big window frame. It's a thing I saw on Pinterest. I thought it was absolutely adorable. Um, I'm hoping the window fits. I gotta figure out a way to fix it to the wall, I guess. Um, right, so that's what I'm doing. I think it's a really, really cute idea. The panels are a little bit too big for me. I wish they were too, a little bit smaller, but all I'm gonna have to do really is uh, print the pictures on... Uh, I can make them small and have a nice matting in the back. Or I can just have um, five by seven pictures or eight by whatever they uh, call them, eight by six, and put them in there. But that's definitely what I want on that wall. So let me clean this and then I have to figure out a way um, to hang it. That's going to be a whole, you know, other uh, enterprise on its own. So, all right, I'll be right back. Ta-da! And I'm a bit of a nut. This is what I did. First of all, I want to show you something. It doesn't look like it's level, right? But when you put the level on top, it is. So obviously the ceiling is crooked. So now, I wanted to preserve the chain. I know it sounds nuts, but I wanted to preserve the chain. I'm excited this is my first home, you know, so because, um, and these are made of um, copper, I believe. So what I did is that I used those picture frame hangers, right? And the little loops here of the original chain from the guillotine windows fits right in there so that's perfect so I have the two of them on either side 
I mean, it doesn't look all that great, but the advantage is that it allows me to display the chain on the side of it. Now, I picked the yellow side, um, even though it's kind of like the color that was in the basement before that I got rid of and put the uh, gray and the white instead. But the reason why I did this is because the back of it is really, really damaged and it's falling off. This one um, is recessed, so it does look more like a, a picture frame, at least that's the way. It is for me so let me pull out so you can see it and that's what it looks like and I really really like the look of it there's so many things you can do with this I'm gonna put my books back um, I have to clean up all the stuff I wish I had um, two of those but I only have one if I had two I would have used those instead um, yeah I'm, I love it I really really like it so let me put the stuff back then I have another idea about a uh, decorative item I want to put there that's a nail I did not use. So this goes back here. I have to find a uh, little lamp to put there, but something really, really small, um, almost like a nightlight type that we can have there when we watch TV. Um, because otherwise, we watch TV and it's like all dark. You have to actually get up and get either this one or the one that's over there. Um, I could leave this one on, but I don't want to put it on the other side. And just in case you're wondering, this guy's name is Norris. Um, I've had him for quite a while. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let me go ahead and figure out what I want to do um, with decor on it. I'm not going to fill it up yet because I have to print the pictures, but I'm really loving the way this looks right now. All right, so I am done with this project. I just want to show you what I did. I added the wreath that I had upstairs. You remember the Christmas wreath that I put together with the uh, butterflies? Well, I just pretty much pinned it to the top right here in the corner. So it gives it a little bit of a primitive look. Again, there's going to be um, paper of different colors, pretty much the same colors as these. I'm not gonna go crazy, you know, flu or anything like this, but it gives it a little bit of dimension. And then I'm gonna put pictures or collages. I can even put some heirloom, like one of the things that I could put actually there is this thing right here, which is a, uh, a silver um, mesh I think and silk on the inside it's a, a little purse that used to belong to great grandma so I can put there right here in the corner perfect and I could even I probably would have to put a nail right there to make sure it doesn't fall and I could probably put vintage handkerchiefs you know things like that um, nah it looks funky I'm gonna take it down um, so I could put like, you know, heirloom, vintage handkerchiefs, maybe some letters that I have, because you remember I have a lot of old letters that I brought back from Ohio. So there's a lot of things I could put behind this. Just as a display, it fills the wall. It doesn't look um, like it's taking too much space in the room. And I'm pulling back as much as I can. So when you come down from the stairs, that's pretty much what the basement looks like at the moment. So it looks much much bigger. I'm loving it. I can't believe how much I did. Huh. I didn't think I was going to do that much, but that's what it looks like right now. And then this is the one I did first, which is okay. I'm not crazy about it, but I think I should put my uh, dolls where I can really see them. They kind of like hidden in there. I don't know. We'll see. And then of course the um, sleigh in the corner and another pan and the eyesore of the temporary bookshelf is still over there so the next time I see you and I'm doing a, a little project in the basement that's what I will be taking care of and yeah that's pretty much it very happy I'm glad I put that cover on that horrible sofa it, it really really blends in nicely I still believe I need a little bit of a red thing on here I don't know I'll, I'll see I have some red fabric I can probably make some uh, cushions for that um but eventually get a, uh, um, like I said, a, a good slip cover that I'm going to have to make. And it's probably going to be in grey because I like the colour and the way it looks. Alright, so this was Sophia from my great challenge blogspot.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be as I'm filming this. I hope it was not boring and too long. Um, I'm hoping you enjoy my decorative style. It's a little bit eclectic. There's a bit of everything. I mean, we have 1950s stuff and uh, modern furniture with some primitive in the back. It's, you know, but that's the way it is. And then on the other side, I still have my desk with 
I just put those there, but I don't have to keep them there. Um, they're those tin advertisement. I just, I don't know, I've had them for ages and I've always liked them. So I will see you in my next video, probably either upstairs in the office or downstairs in the basement. I don't know yet because you know I'm always coming up with some new ideas. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you're new and I'll talk to you later. Bye!